Welcome to Blueprint IoT. Today's video is about the Internet of Things and how it actually works. So IoT stands for Internet of Things. But let's take a closer look on those words. Internet stands for interconnected networks, so at least two networks which are connected and communicate to each other. Networks can be everything from a local home network of two computers or a computer and a tablet but can also be big networks of many devices such as you find in companies or organizations. But since we're talking about IoT, we are talking about interconnected networks of things. While the traditional internet consists of computers, tablets and smartphones, things can be everything from a light bulb or a socket up to a fridge or a sensor. So all those things are now organized in a network and connected to each other via the internet. Let's take a closer look how this works. First of all, we can categorize our things. Some of them mainly receive commands, some of them send information, like a temperature, and others do both, so transceive information. But to be part of the internet, we need to talk to the internet. Unfortunately, this can't be done directly. We have to go through a base unit, which is actually capable to manage this communication. A base unit can be everything from an ESP8266 or an Arduino up to a Raspberry Pi. Of course there are a bunch of other microcontrollers out there, but for the moment we want to keep it simple. The benefit of those I named here is the big community you can build on. So no need to write every piece of code by your own. But to communicate from our thing to our base unit and vice versa, we need to use some kind of signal or protocol. Basically, we have the choice between digital and analog communication. While an analog signal is simply a voltage level or current, digital communication can capitalize on a bus system like OneWire or I2C. If you're more interested into those communication protocols, check out one of our other videos. Eventually, we really want to enter the internet via a wired or wireless connection. And I'm simplifying a lot at this point. We have to go through a router which will basically manage all internet traffic for us. But guess what? We need another type of protocol to make this communication happen. We can use something like HTTPS, what you already know from websites and stuff like this, where the S stands for secure. A more IoT related protocol like MQTT, which is also known as the IoT protocol, will fit our needs more conveniently. If you want to learn more about MQTT, make sure to check out our MQTT basics video. So we finally made it to the internet and can talk to a cloud now, which is basically just a fancy word for a server connected to the internet. This server may host a database where you can store your sensor data and you can access this server via his IP address, which will look like something like this. But we are still not there yet. Since we want to use MQTT, we also need a so-called MQTT broker who will manage all our MQTT messages. This broker can, but doesn't have to, sit on the same server as our database. At this point we are almost done, except the use case. Of course it's nice to have your data sitting up there in the cloud, but we want to do something with it. So we want to reach out to our users, who will potentially use a smartphone to access our thing. So once more we need a protocol like HTTPS, MQTT or any other fancy internet protocol. So let's say you want to set the temperature of your fridge to 4 degrees. So your command will travel through the internet managed by our broker, ending up at our base unit, which will order the fridge to seek for a temperature of 4 degrees. Once this is done, we are going to confirm that the temperature is now set to 4 degrees, report this back to the server, who will save the latest settings in his database, and will let you know that the fridge followed your command and you can be happy. Of course we can also have all kind of fancy graphs of the actual temperature measured by our sensor, stored in our database and displayed in our IoT app. So this is basically it. Now you know how IoT works, which kind of components and protocols are involved and if you want to learn more about the details, make sure to subscribe and check out our other videos. See you next time.